dai dai da da dai 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 if that is considered fat, what do they think of Americans? Mega Ranger. Welcome, I am the Kaiju no Kami, and today I'm going to take a look at Shout Factory's latest Super Sentai release, Denji Sentai Mega Ranger which, funny enough, aired 20 years ago. Mega Ranger was originally conceived as a space-themed show about a group of space colonists titled Giga Ranger, before becoming one set on Earth featuring digital technology. This led to some confusion as to what the show was exactly about, which does explain why Saban ended up turning into a space-themed Power Ranger series. Nevertheless, the Ranger motifs were based on a computer, digital camera, cell phone, satellite, and TV. We got some really interesting abilities of the Ranger, such as being able to transport monsters into Tron World. <laughs> and inside of a movie. <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy animal. I wish they did that more often. This would be the last series to feature two female rangers for the next seven years. Additionally, due to the franchise's continued ratings decline, a decision was made to change its Friday night time slot to a Sunday morning one between episodes 7 and 8, where it would air at 7.30 a.m. for the next two decades before having another change. This change also meant the runtime of the episodes increased from 19 minutes to 24 minutes an episode. Finally, this was the second series to put high schoolers into the role of the heroes, which was first done in 1989's Kosoku Sentai Turbo Ranger. The heroes. Having high schoolers be your heroes can be kind of tricky because you need to be able to balance their lives as superheroes equally with their lives as being teenagers. Fortunately, Toei had some of their best writers on this show who were able to do exactly that as we get a perfect balance that leaves the audience wanting to see our heroes succeed in their dual lives. These kids are Kenta Date, Koichiro Endi, Shun Namiki, Shisato Jogosaki, and Mika Imamura. They are played by Kunihiko Oshiba, Atsushi Ebura, Masaya Matsuzaki, Iri Tanaka, and Mami Higashiyama. There are two things of interest here, the first dealing with their last names, because look at how their names are. Date, Endi, Namiki, Jogasaki, Imamura. The first initials of their last name spell out Denji for Denji Sentai. Pretty cool when you think about it. Additionally, Mega Blues Matsuzaki has appeared in many Sentai series after this and even auditioned for the role of Kamen Rider Kuga. He has also voiced many anime characters such as Zoisite and Sailor Moon Crystal, Toru Mikami in Death Note, and Kyoya Otari in Oran Host Club. All of the Rangers have their own wonderful personalities that defines each one of them, making it hard for me to really choose a favorite. Oh, and unlike most of the previous teams I have reviewed, these guys have to keep their identity secret from everyone. Kenta is the hot-headed slacker of the group who loves Yakinuki and will rush into any situation head-on. This will often get him into trouble at times. The rest of his friends will have to bail him out of the situation, sometimes endangering themselves in the process. He will also retort to some comments made with great hilarity. Love it. I should also note that Kenta was chosen to be a Mega Ranger based on a video game that was set up in an arcade as a training program. Kind of a bit of flawed logic there, because if that's the case, I am an expert at piloting, sniping, being a vampire killer, blowing up robots, augmentations, stealth, 
and so on. Oh, and jumping on Goombas. Yep, clearly I'm able to jump on top of monsters because of how good I am at video games. <sighs> if only that could actually be real. Opposite to Kent is the more thought-provoking Koichiro who would rather study his options before jumping into a situation. He is actually the leader of the team, an overachiever. And believes they have to always be training for their fights when they are not studying. He's basically the student you hate because he's the one that messes up the curve. We also meet his brother in an episode and learn that he is a top notch soccer player. Shun embodies the persona of both characters as he will try to assess a situation before jumping into it unless there are no alternatives. His dream is to go to America and he initially decides to not be part of the team so he can focus on that goal. It isn't until his many loads of floppy disks are destroyed by a monster that he decides to take the role of Mega Blue seriously. Okay, technically it was Kenta fighting the monster for his life that made him take it seriously, but damn, look at all those disks. <laughs> You kids have it so easy today with your imaginary cloud servers. In addition, we also learned that his mother died sometime before the show began and that she was a musician. Japan is as harmful to parents as Disney. This in turn causes Shun to fall in love with an android just because she can play the flute. Hey Shun, answer me this question. Does she dream of electric sheep? If I had to pick a favorite ranger though, it would be Chisato. She is the first one to risk everything by being the first of the five to transform in front of the villains in order to save a child. <laughs> She has a lot of layers as a character and wishes to be a professional photographer when she grows up. Even when everything seems futile, she is there to see the upside of the situation and get over it for the better of herself and her friends. This also includes one time when she is captured by these evil rangers in the last act of the show and finds a way to escape on her own. <laughs> We also get to meet her eccentric grandma who comes to town trying to marry her off in one episode. Finally, we have Miku. She is like Kenta in that she likes to be lazy whenever possible, and she is also an airhead, but she always does what is best for the team in the long run. <laughs> She almost also gave up her identity as Mega Pink early on in the series as she was on a date with a shy boy when the villains began to attack a building they were in. Their suits and weapons are pretty cool, although I cannot help but laugh at what the technology aspect would be like in today's world. I can just imagine it right now. They're getting ready to fight, and suddenly one of them says, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Um, you need to hold off a minute because we need to download a firmware update before we can actually fight you. So please stand there for a moment because that's something that would... Whoa, wait a minute. Actually, something like that did kind of happen in the show. Additionally, considering that it's 1997, I really wanted to see this happen.
That would have been hilarious. As with every ranger team, they are not alone. Their most important ally is the man in charge of the Mega Ranger program and creator of the Mega Suits, Professor Ikiji Kubota, who is played by Sotaru Saito. You may recognize Saito's other roles such as General Cactus in Die Ranger and the father of the family in All Ranger. The organization he works for is known as the International Network of Excel Science and Technology, or INET for short. Kubota shows a lot of personality throughout the show as he does his best to make sure the Rangers can maintain their high school lives while being heroes along with being a troubled individual by his best friend's apparent death when an experiment went awry. <laughs> Also, Abba Ranger fans might recognize one of his associates. Mm. Long time no see. What are you doing to me, man? This is too painful. I can't stand this anymore. The next major ally is an INET scientist named Yusaku Hayakawa. B fighter Shigeru Kanai plays this wannabe common writer who joins in on the fight against evil as Mega Silver. <laughs> Unfortunately for half of his appearances, his suit has a time limit of two and a half minutes, so he isn't always able to fight for extensive periods of time. Of course, the trouble with him having a time limit goes back to the same issue I mentioned way back in my Ultraman review, in that that two and a half minutes lasts as long as the writers need it to. It is an interesting concept though, and keeps Mega Silver from overstaying his welcome. <laughs> He shows up when he needs to, kicks ass, and goes away. It also helps him throw a cog into the plans of the villains in one of the show's later arcs. Oh, and did I mention he has a cool bike? Being that our core cast are high schoolers, it is only natural that they would have school-related allies. First, we have the shy boy I mentioned previously named Shintaru Wada and his buddy Jiro Iwamoto. Those of you who have seen Ju Ranger may recognize Jiro as being played by Tiger Ranger's Takumi Hashimoto. Lastly, they have a lazy bones teacher named Gen Oiwa. Oh. Um, bad touch, dude. Um, if you were in America, you'd be in jail by now. The villains. The villains of Mega Ranger are a group of twisted individuals known as Neji Regia, and they also somehow have managed to acquire their own TARDIS. They are led by a giant eyeball thing known as Javius the First. His main general is Dr. Hinelar, who is the aforementioned colleague of Kubota I mentioned a few minutes ago. There is more to his character than that, but revealing it would require diving into end of series spoiler territory, so I will leave it at that. Dr. Kubota. I really like Dr. Hinalar, and I believe he is the last male non-costume villain of the franchise until Geki Ranger, which makes him even more badass. One aspect of the character I do like is that he really does care for his subordinates, compared to other generals who see them as nothing more than pawns. About his subordinates, they include a woman named Shibalina, a warrior named Yagande, and a little critter named Bibi Debi. Stop. I know what you're thinking because my inner Tim Burton says it too. Yagande is my favorite of the group as his skills are as badass as his looks. I also like how he goes through a couple of evolutions throughout the show as he is constantly being rebuilt or repaired after his battles. <laughs>
It is also worth noting that Uganda is voiced by the late Hirotaka Suzuoki, who was Bright Noah in Gundam, Tenshin Han in Dragon Ball, Saito in Rurouni Kenshin, and Starscream in the Japanese dub of Transformers. Shibalina, on the other hand, is standard fare as far as Sentai villains go. The colors on her work, and I love her nails. Shibalina's internet safety tips. Please tell us, Dr. Kubota, what the internet is full of. Thank you, Doctor. Safety tip number one, avoid clickbait sites. You never know what you're going to find on the internet. The end. There is another general who is sent by Javius to take charge during the second quarter of the series. His name is Girayo. Girayo has a really kick-ass introduction where he gets Kenta to doubt his role as Mega Red, only for him to fall into lackluster generic material afterwards. He doesn't really accomplish much and feels like a filler villain more so than anything else. Normally I try to avoid the Power Rangers Sentai comparisons in these reviews, but I do need to say that if you were a fan of Darkonda in Power Rangers in Space, Expect massive disappointment from Gurayo. For the first half of the show, the monsters of the week are known as Nejire Beasts. These creatures are a mix between living organisms with Nejire DNA. <laughs> While they may not be the most exciting monster designs compared to other shows, there are some pretty cool ones. There's a bat monster that turns CDs evil. A kick-ass rose monster. A crocodile monster, a killer moth, however my favorite design goes to the Koro Nejure. He just looks like he came out of someone's nightmare. The second half of the show's monsters are called Psychonagulars. These beasts are robots with the likeness of organic creatures. My favorite of this group is Hell Nagular. Ah! Ah! All of the monsters grow big by being bitten by BB Devi. The foot soldiers are called Kune Kune. These are purple creatures with yellow and gold twists around their bodies. They seem like your normal foot soldiers, but there is one notable difference. There is an episode where an army of them disguise themselves as humans and take over a nearly abandoned apartment complex in an invasion of the body snatchers like scenario. This is a pretty cool setup that gives them more of an edge over other foot soldiers as they even combine with each other to form a giant Kune Kune that makes me think of Legion from Castlevania. <laughs> Finally, one of the major highlights of the series villains comes in the last quarter of the series with a group of evil rangers known as the Neji Rangers. <laughs> Yes, Evil Clone Rangers is nothing new for the franchise, but this group is different as several episodes are spent on this team, with many of those featuring them overpowering our heroes. They really brought a new dynamic to a series that was in its 21st iteration. Also, Neji Yellow is voiced by Masako Kasuki. Her anime roles include Rakoa in Zeta Gundam, Kayura in Samurai Trooper, and the original Sailor Neptune. The Mecha. Like Car Ranger, this show features four main mechs. They are Galaxy Mega, Delta Mega, Mega Voyager, and Mega Winger. Galaxy Mega is my favorite of the bunch due to him being a transforming spaceship rather than a bunch of combining robots.
I love combiners, but he brings a nice change of pace compared to the last million shows that came before it. His blue, red, and silver colors are pretty striking too. Delta Mega is okay, but his only purpose is to make Galaxy Mega more powerful. While there is nothing inherently wrong with that, I wish they had done more with the machine. He is pretty much pointless once Mega Voyager is introduced, who is more like your traditional Sentai Max as each ranger gets their own vehicle that combines. They are an astronaut, a rocket, a shuttle, a UFO, and a tank? I'm not exactly sure why there is a tank, but okay. The combined form makes me think of what Optimus Prime would look like if he had taken on the form of a spaceship rather than a truck. His finishing move is to launch rockets at the monster. Finally, Mega Winger is Silver's mecha, and I actually like it. The color scheme is pretty fresh, although I'm trying to figure out why it is white instead of silver. This machine doesn't show up until episode 36, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. And like its owner, it doesn't show up all the time. <laughs> Although a lot of the times when Winger does show up, it's just to give wings to Mega Voyager for a final attack. This does make sense though, as Hayakawa even says Mega Winger was designed to be part of the Voyager machines. The effects and music. Sorry. Oku Keiichi helmed the show's kick-ass energetic soundtrack. There's so many top-notch tunes to be had from his opening theme sung by Naoto Fuga. To all of its background music like this. And this. <laughs> and this. And this. this one that sounds strangely familiar. I know I've heard this track somewhere, but I can't think where. And this one. This show has a lot of great music. There are also two ending themes, with the main one being Kinosei Kana from Takatora. And its second one, Bomb Dancing Mega Ranger. Also, Bomb Dancing Mega Ranger is the first Sentai ending theme to be sung by a woman whose name is Hiroko Asakawa. Oh yeah, I love the music so much that I kind of forgot about the effects. They're pretty much what you expect of Sentai from the time period. There are some poor green blue screen effects, especially since they have surfboards that they can fly on, but overall they are solid. <laughs> Oh, 
そうだね We interrupt your regularly scheduled review for a breaking news story This just in, NASA has informed us they found the dead body of a missing Japanese girl in space. Sources say that she's been missing for the last three weeks, and her family is quite concerned on what happened. Currently, we are awaiting further news, and we hope to have something more for you soon. We return you to your scheduled review, already in progress. I will say that the camera work does take a bit of a downgrade from the last several series, which is kind of a letdown. There are still outstanding moments, they are just rarer than they used to be. Nevertheless, the fight choreography is done well enough to distract you from the lack Camera techniques. The episodes. That one's pretty cool. That one's a good episode, too. I really like that episode, and that episode's pretty badass. That one's badass, too. Mega Ranger has a lot of pretty outstanding episodes, although a couple of lackluster ones do crop up every now and then. However, even the lackluster ones have something in them worth watching. Except for the clip show, because God's help me, the clip shows are worthless. In fact, this is the first of many series that will have a clip show to be shown as the New Year's episode. Don's the clip show. My least favorite episode of the series is episode five. Finish it, this is an underhanded battle. Features an INET executive who decides an AI program is better suited to control Galaxy Mega in battle than the Mega Rangers. It does about as well as you would expect, which is one of the reasons why I hate this episode. <laughs> It is just so stupid, so cookie cutter, and so one dimensional. If the Rangers had lost the previous battle or gotten Galaxy Mega badly damaged, then I could understand the reasoning behind this decision. But since they didn't, there is no reason for this scenario to even exist. The only positive I will say is in the way they light the executive scenes to make him look ominous. <laughs> There are a couple of other stinker episodes like the one where Kenta takes care of a baby Zora. And an episode where Koyuchiro befriends the spirit of a forest that has taken the form of a child. Mega Black! You're on the other hand, as I said, there are a lot of solid episodes to be found in this show. There is an episode where the moth Nigeray Beast poisons the city and we get to see our heroes having to come to grips with the possibility of dying in a few hours. Is an episode that is serious, yet also manages to find moments to place comedy in, hoping to avoid frightening the child audience. Only Kenta. <laughs> With that said, my favorite episode is from the Neji Ranger arc, Lose Thumb, the Evil Pursuers. This episode features Neji Yellow, Red, and Black taking up human forms as they hunt the rangers after studying their voices. Miku finds herself being hunted without the others knowing exactly where she is. <laughs> This episode is full of intense moments that keeps you on the edge of your seat as the Neji Rangers play their game of cat and mouse. <laughs> As a villain's lover, you want to see them catch Miku. While on the other hand, Miku's bubbly personality keeps you from wanting that to happen. 
In fact, the show manages to balance comedy and drama all of the time. We will have some really intense moments like this. Followed by something like this. No matter the situation, it usually works more than not. Lastly, another thing I love with the show is continuity. There is an episode where Kenta's drill saber is destroyed in a fight with Uganda. <laughs> And in the next episode, this happens. The DVD. Shout Factory has thankfully provided with us another solid DVD release, although there are a couple of small minor oddities with it. Nothing as bad as Car Ranger. Toei's DVD release in Japan had the show split across 10 discs, whereas this set has it split over 8. It's a little odd as I'm not sure if that means they use the exact same masters or not. I also don't own those Japanese discs, so I can't even do a comparison. Either way, I didn't notice any compression issues or anything that would indicate the discs took a downturn in quality due to extra episodes on the discs. Thankfully, there are no mistimed subs that we had with a few of the Car Ranger episodes. However, not everything is perfect. There are a couple of sentences that are either missing missing a word or just missing all together. Also, for some reason, they constantly change the spelling of Hinalar at times, as sometimes his name will end with AR and other times with ER. This seemed to stop occurring during the second half of the show, but it is still puzzling as to why it happened in the first place. Did they have it spelled ER initially and Toei told them to correct it to AR? Of course, that's not even the weirdest bit. No. That goes to episodes 6 and 25. For some reason, the subs on episode 6 are displayed at the top of the screen rather than the bottom during the last few minutes of the episode. As for episode 25, this occurs. Not sure exactly how that happened, but I'll take that over mistime subs. Mega Ranger vs. Car Ranger. I think we all know at this point that the movies are not included in Child's License. Mega Ranger only had one movie, which was a versus movie against the previous team, Car Ranger. A fairy dragon creature is chased to Earth by an evil biker named Hamado. He crosses paths with the Mega Rangers who rescues the creature, so Hamado naturally joins forces with Nageragia, at least temporarily. We do get a cool bike scene between Silver and Hamado. Along with an interesting mech battle early on of Hamado riding his bike while gigantic. The Mega Ranger's possession of the dragon creature leads them to crossing paths with the Car Rangers and a bit of hilarity ensues. The teams have some pretty good chemistry with each other as neither are very serious groups and they work well enough together. Shibali not having an ability to hypnotize the Car Rangers into following her seems like a poor excuse to get the teams to fight one another though. Which is a common problem with most of these movies. Still, the movie has liveliness to it and I do like the new suits the Mega Rangers acquire from the Fairy Dragon. Not to mention the English version of the Mega Ranger opening song is pretty awesome. <laughs> Mega Ranger was a show that was fun as it was energetic, engaging, and interesting. The cast is quite strong with a lot of likable characters, even if the villains are not the most well-developed. 
it does have some shortcomings, which is what is keeping Mega Ranger at a four out of five grown-ups in spandex. Ultimately, this is one Sentai show that every fan should check out. Even if you find yourself unimpressed with it initially, keep going. I kind of felt the same way the very first time I watched this show, but the more I've watched it, the more I've loved it, and it just keeps getting better and better with each viewing. And how can you not like the Neji Ranger arc? That alone is worth the price of admission. Oh, and hey, look. They are literally shipping the Mega Rangers. Until next time, bye. Money for hours. Well, 22. I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long.